this is Keith Berkelhammer and this is Reef Bum TV. A few months ago my tank was spiraling downhill pretty quickly as I was mysteriously losing a large number of corals including many LPS colonies and SPS frags. I probably lost 50% of my corals and the ones remaining were not looking good. Common symptoms among the SPS were burnt tips, recession, and expulsion of some sort of slime. Polyps on the LPS were retracted and on some the skin was shedding. Things were going to hell in a handbasket very quickly. My parameters seemed okay according to my test kits, but something was going on that I had never seen before. I needed to take a closer look, so I ordered some Triton ICP tests to get a detailed look at all of the tank's elements. I had done a Triton test a few months before in September when the tank was doing well, so that would serve as a good benchmark versus results during the height of the near crash, which was this past December. Here is what stood out when comparing results. Phosphate dropped from 0.02 to 0.006, a 64% decline, and lithium climbed from 713 to 929, a 30% increase. The low phosphate was concerning, but what about the high lithium? Some industry experts claim high lithium levels are not detrimental to corals in a reef tank, but in my view it was a small red flag. Nonetheless, I decided to act fast with the hope of quickly turning the tank around. I ended up switching from one salt brand to another and changed out 50% of the water over three days. I also doubled on the dose of trace elements I was using. Soon after I did that, the tank began to stabilize and the coral started to rebound. The tank continued to do well over the next several weeks and I decided to order another Triton test to see how things compared to the other two tests. What did I learn from the test after the rebound versus the test during the near crash? Number one, Phosphate levels increased from 0.006 to 0.01, a 76% jump. Just to note, I did start dosing phosphate and will continue to do so to boost levels even higher. The other thing I saw was lithium declined by 18% from 9.29 to 7.66. Based on the results from the three tests, I would have to conclude that very low phosphate levels had something to do with the near crash. Perhaps elevated magnesium was an issue as well, with levels coming down from 1538 during the near crash to 1434 during the rebound. I'm going to assume the large water changes helped to mitigate the concentration of magnesium and maybe the switch to the new salt played a role as well. Was the near crash due to a combination of low nutrients, phosphate and nitrate, and high alkalinity? Burnt tips on SPS is a sign of this as the tissue may not be able to keep up with skeletal growth leaving the thin tissue prone to burning by high intensity light. According to my Salifer test kits, the alkalinity was 8.9 dKH before and during the near crash, while nitrates were 2.5 parts per million during both periods. During the rebound, the alkalinity climbed to 9.9 .9 dKH and the nitrates were 5 parts per million. I am just not sure the alkalinity was high enough during the near crash to be an issue, but my nutrients did climb during the rebound. Okay, what about lithium? My lithium level after the rebound was actually a bit higher than the level before the near crash, so I don't think that was really a factor. Do you have a different theory on what happened? You can follow the link in the upper right hand corner here to see all the data, so have at it and let me know what you think. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be alerted to all of my latest videos. And if you're interested in purchasing a copy of my book, A Reef Bum's Guide to Keeping an SPS Reef Tank, you can click on the other link at the top.